When I first found the money tree, I, I, I couldn't believe my eyes. <laughs> I had no idea yet of the pain and the horror that it would bring about. I mean, if I had, I would have turned around. I would have walked straight away in the opposite direction. But I didn't, of course. I mean, it drew me in like the mirage of an oasis in the desert. It was about the size of an apple tree. But instead of growing fruit, it was growing crisp $20 bills. <laughs> The green paper fluttered in the breeze, and I, I wandered over to it as if in a dream. The tree was far out in the forest where nobody ever was, but still, I felt it immediately as if eyes were on me, you know, watching as I inspected it. The hair stood on the back of my neck, telling me someone was spying, but when I looked around, I, I couldn't see anybody. There, there were $20 bills scattered in the grass all around the tree. Stuck in the branches of the neighboring ones as well. But the other trees weren't like it. See, this is the only money tree around. At least as far as I could tell. My mind grappled with it, trying to decide if I was dreaming. I pinched my arm as hard as I could, and I felt a sharp sting of pain. Nope, not dreaming. This was real. Whatever magic had summoned this... this... thing... Up from the ground, there was no signs of its origin, only the tree itself. A miracle, as far as I could tell. I'd been desperately broke lately. My, my wife and I had been struggling with paying the bills, and I quickly realized that this tree could solve all of our problems. There had to be thousands of dollars scattered all around. All I had to do was collect them from the ground. So I took off my sweatshirt. I made it into a, a makeshift bundle. I stooped down, stuffed bills inside of it as quickly as I could. After only a few minutes, I heard the sound of someone's soft footsteps in the grass nearby. And I looked up as they were clearing their throat. Oh, uh, I said, I I'm sorry, is this, is this your tree? The fact that this tree should not exist at all seemed to hang in the air between us, the words left unspoken. It's nobody's tree. This forest and this tree are as much mine as they are yours. And that is to say that they belong to no one. <sighs> I breathed a sigh of relief. He wasn't going to try and stop me. I stooped down and began to stuff bills into the shirt bag, feeling self-conscious now as he watched me. My eyes darted up at him occasionally, watching him cautiously, but he, he just stood there with his arms crossed. Can I give you a piece of advice? I looked up again. It took a few seconds to actually take in the man's appearance. He was dressed in ragged, earth-colored clothes with holes in the elbows and knees of his brown pants. His long coat, his, his beard was overgrown and flecked with gray, full of twigs and leaves and other debris, making me think this forest was, in fact, this man's home. He reminded me of someone I, I realized I was thinking of Radagast brown wizard from Lord of the Rings who could speak to animals and could change his shape. It wasn't until much later that I realized the aptness of that comparison. Sure, I said carefully, not wanting to upset the odd, disheveled stranger. Don't pick the bills off the tree itself. The ones on the ground are fair game. They could take those home. She won't mind a bit. If they fall off, they're yours. But don't take from the tree what is still growing from it. It's important that you understand. I was already looking at the ground again, stuffing cash in my makeshift sack, only half listening, really, but I said, okay, no problem. Just, just to get him to leave me alone. <laughs> it worked. When I looked up again, he was gone. I filled up the shirt and my pants pockets, my shoes, any place I could think to carry the cash. Once I got back home, I told my wife we were going to be okay. That everything was finally going to be okay. But strangely enough, it wasn't. I lost my job and I had to apply for unemployment the very next day canceling out any gains from the money tree. The layoffs were completely unexpected. I mean, thus we were unable to prepare ourselves for the consequences. Everyone I worked with was devastated. 
The company had folded, and the owner decided it was too awkward and too, and too embarrassing to tell everyone. So we all went home one night thinking everything was okay, and we, we came back the next day to find that the place was shuttered. A sign on the door simply said, closed. The owners wouldn't pick up the phone when we called. Our pink slips came in the mail later that day, and I read it as if dreaming, thinking to myself, cowards. What a bunch of cowards they are. Why couldn't they just tell us the truth? Anyway, despite the loss of a steady paycheck and the health benefits, I was slightly less upset than everyone else because, because uh, I knew I had the money tree to go back to. The thought briefly occurred to me that I should share the secret with a few people from work, but I quickly decided against it. There was only so much cash to go around, but not, not to mention, I began to feel a sort of jealous ownership of the tree, despite the fact that the creepy bearded man in brown always watched me while I collected the money. Every time I went back there, there was a little bit less cash on the ground, and the remaining bills were in the worse and worse condition, being the ones I'd left behind time and time again. I started to collect those dregs, the, the ripped and soaked in mud, only barely usable. Finally, one time I went back and I saw the ground only had a few bills fluttering around on it. I snatched them up quickly, grabbed a couple more that were snagged on nearby branches. My sack was still so empty, and there were only the bills growing on the tree remaining. I looked around. I, I thought the man in brown was nowhere to be seen. He was gone for once, <laughs> but still. I felt oddly as if he was watching me. Waiting for me to break his rules. But, but what could he possibly do if I did? Th there was no choice. I didn't, I didn't have enough money for rent or for the car insurance bill and... Not to mention the overdue credit card, the, the cell phone bills, the utilities. My hand reached up and I felt one of the bills on the tree, tugging on it ever, ever so gently. It wouldn't come free. I pulled harder and harder, but it, it wouldn't let go of it. I tried a different bill and I found the same thing happened. It was firmly fastened to the tree. I pulled out my pocket knife, I flicked it out from its closed position, then I began to saw at the connection point between the tree and the $20 bill. The blade sliced through quickly enough and I inspected it in my hand. More or less normal, except for a slight deformed spot in the center where the knife had raggedly cut through. It was like a pimple on the flat green surface of the bill, still oozing a white sap-like substance. I touched my finger to it and I, I sniffed it. Inspecting it. It didn't smell good. A bit like the smell of glue and, and rotting wood. And it was sticky. I couldn't get it off my finger. The sap was tenacious. It got all over everything I touched. Still, I, I needed more money. I cut down more $20 bills and I heaped them into my bag, care being careful not to touch the white sap after the first time. Still, it managed to get everywhere, and by the time I was done, I was covered in this stuff. It seemed like it was multiplying. I turned around, uh, startled to see a deer a little ways off in the trees, watching me. Its eyes seemed to judge me as it chewed on some unidentifiable greenery in its mouth. I needed it, I said self-consciously. More to myself than to anyone else. I'm sorry. The tree stood half bare and sad looking. When I glanced back at it, that I... Uh, I tried not to think about it too much as I stomped back through the forest towards my home. My first stop was at the ATM machine where I would deposit the money into my account, thus allowing my bills to be paid electronically. It was practically impossible to pay bills with cash these days, after all. Funny thing was, the ATM didn't accept the bills. Even though it always had before, the machines no longer used an envelope, but instead it took the bills and counted them directly. And as a result, with the, the sticky white sap still leaking from the bills, it caused the machine to jam up. I tore them out from the cash deposit slot. I felt my face get hot as I turned around. 
and apologized to the other bank customers waiting in line. The machine was now flashing red, saying, Error, please see customer service, and my card was stuck inside of it. After several hours at the bank trying to explain why my cash looked so strange and seemed to be leaking sticky white fluid in places, they eventually accepted it with wary looks on their faces. I received an ominous warning that if the bills turned out not to be genuine, I would be in a lot of trouble. I drove home from the bank with a heavy heart and a guilty conscience. That night, I took a long shower to try to get the sticky sap off my hands from all the bills, but even after a half hour of scrubbing, I was still finding it in places after I dried off. I mean, the stuff was more than tenacious. It was inescapable, it seemed. After a restless night's sleep, I awoke to find myself covered in the sap. It was stretching out in strands which connected my limbs to the rest of my body whenever I moved. My, my heart was pounding hard in my chest. My hands were shaking as I turned on the shower to the highest heat possible and climbed in, scalding my skin and not caring as I tried to scrub it all off. Some of the sap went down the drain. Much of it stayed on me. And I realized with, with increasing terror that I was now covered in the white, oozing pimple spots, like the, like the one on the bill, the one I had to cut from the tree. They were leaking the sap all over me. It, it was running out over my skin in rivulets. This leaking sap was quickly drying off and hardening like, like magma from a volcano, turning my flesh crispy and hard in places. There was only one thing I could think to do. I ran out to the forest as fast as my legs would carry me, racing back to the money tree. I had to talk to the man in the woods, the protector of the tree. He, he would tell me what to do. The run back to the place where the tree was becoming more and more difficult as I went. Sap was leaking steadily from the oozing wounds on my skin and hardening, making my flesh feel as if, as if it was turning to stone. My fear turned to dread when I came out into the clearing and found the money tree. I mean, it, it looked much different now than when I had first discovered it. The branches were withered, it was decaying, snapped off in places. It looked rotten and hollow inside. Millipedes went in and out of pockmarks in the trunk, and the whole thing looked like it could collapse at any moment. The few remaining bills left upon it were yellowed, riddled with holes, unusable. A roar came from behind me, and I spun around to see a huge brown bear standing up on its back legs. I stared up at it and watched terrified as it started to speak in a low, rumbling voice. You were chosen as a representative of your kind. The forest gave you a test to pass, and you have failed. Do you have anything to say for yourself? I went down on my knees with an effort, raising my hands in a prayer-like pose up to him, pleading with him, help me, please, I'm sorry, it was a mistake. He shook his head at me and he frowned, no remorse or compassion to be seen on his face. Roots began to spread out of my feet, planting me there and further preventing my escape. From the white, leaking places where the white pustules had been, small buds were beginning to poke out and open, bursting through my skin with agonizing, excruciating pain. Become one with nature, said the bear. I screamed. But no sounds came out. The bear eventually retreated into the trees. I found myself looking down. I saw the little surprise that my legs had begun to harden together and turn brown like the trunk of a tree. My hands could still move, at least, allowing me to reach my phone. Trapped there as I was, there was little else to do besides phone for help, sit patiently, wait for my wife to arrive. So I type this out, I decide to share it. And maybe it will save someone's life one day, maybe yours. If you come across a money tree, I hope for your sake that you don't. Hey there, kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and thank you for watching tonight's video, or listening to tonight's podcast, and thank you for clicking the thumbs up, the subscribe, the follow, the bell, the whatever uh, helpful thing there is on such a platform. I want to tell you about one quick thing before we say goodbye for the evening, and that's going to be about the Mr. Creepypasta plush! 
The plush is only available for a limited time. So if you guys head over to makeship.com, then you guys are able to get this Mr. Creepypasta plush. It's super cool. It glows in the dark, which is really cool. And he's super soft and cuddly. So it's uh, makeship.com slash products slash Mr. Creepypasta hyphen plush. Or you know what's easier? Makeship.com. Uh, there you go. And as always, I want to give a very big thank you to everybody who is supporting me on Patreon. A huge thank you to patrons such as Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Brian Ars, Bobby Carmen, Stephanie Butler, Tristan Pelton, Chance Burnett, Diana Krause, William King, Heather McDonald, Reaper 61167, Alex the Sandwich, Darth Miver, Michael Ortiz, Satanic Aries, Ness 69420, Isoto Hatred with two exclamation points, Nessie, Ronnie Hansen, Bardo Hawk 764, Melancholy Corpse, Ferb, Harley, Billy Morrow, Madam Skull Bunny, Sashi Suzaku, Grizzly Olsen Dut Pro, Caden the Spooky Boy, Zane Nightshade, My Body Sounds Like Rice Krispies, Ashwood, Lord of the Weebs, Jay, Miss Xandra, Mr. Unsettling Spaghetti, Suji Campbell, Stricken, Azarine Fox, Fried Chicken 12, Freddy Krueger, Ty Nanny, Michael Scarborough, Infernal One, Lisa Cottrell, Caspian, Jordan Elves, Hades Nephew, Tate Chip, Acid System, Prozac and Pancake Appreciation Society, Cryptic Nightmares, Kira the Sloth, Tommy Green, Fester's Lampshade, Sky Harbor, Nina Smith, Nico Cayo, Rafael Rodriguez, The Ginger Bros, Aaron Stormcrow, Daniel Polson, Trey Smiles, and Corey Kenshin. Thank you guys so much, so, so much, so, so, so much for being a part of the Patreon and helping me keep the lights on and helping me get exclusive stories and everything that we do on the channel here. It really means so much to me. I hope you all have a very happy Halloween and sweet dreams.